Hello and welcome to a special episode of Tech for Finance. Um, this episode is best watched on video because I do some demos of ChatGPT, Notable and Poe. Um, we cover all sorts, so uh, the free versus paid version of ChatGPT, um, how to use Notable for data visualization um, and how to create AI bots for free using Poe. Uh, split into three parts. So the first part will look at ChatGPT free versus paid. Second part is Notable. And the third part is uh, Poe and creating bots. So yeah, if you do want to watch on video, it will be more useful than listening on audio, even though I do talk through uh, most of what we see on screen. So if you do like my voice <laughs> and uh, want to listen, um, that's absolutely fine. As I say, if not, check out Spotify video or YouTube. See you soon. Cheers. Hello, everyone. Welcome to AI and finance, unlocking the potential of AI tools in your daily workflow. I'm very happy to have all of you here with us today um, as we explore some benefits, use cases for AI and finance, and get some hand-on guidance on AI tools you can start using today. So I am Hadal Landau. I'm the marketing manager at Received, um, a B2B billing and revenue management platform specifically designed for B2B companies. Um, so whether it's bespoke contracts, hybrid pricing models, or different revenue streams. So if that's relevant to you, please check us out later. Um, but first, a quick logistics notes for the webinar. So if you have any questions during the webinar, um, please write them down in the chat and we will reserve the last 10 minutes at the end to answer all of your questions, okay? Okay, so now I'm very happy to introduce our AI expert, um, Adam Shelton. So Adam is the founder and CEO of Tech for Finance. So Adam, thank you so much for joining us today. Would you mind telling us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, cool. And it's really good to to be here. Um, so actually, I've uh, been connected with with Roy um, on LinkedIn for a while. He was actually a guest on my podcast a while back. So um, shout out to Roy. It was a, it was a really good session. Um, but yeah, that, I love AI and I love finance. So, so my my background is more in sort of software and ERP. So I still do a bit of that. Um, but yeah, the the passion project, the tech for finance, is all about making sure that finance pros are aware of what's available and, and trying to provide guidance where, where I can really, um, because it's not going away. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, Adam. Um, okay, guys, so to set the stage and kind of get a little bit of a context before we dive into the showcase, I do want to talk a little bit about the state of finance, um, AI and finance today. And so I'm also going to launch a quick poll because I also want to get your view on this. And while you guys answer, I'm also going to ask um, Adam to tell us a little bit, like from your experience, what are the most common use cases that you know for AI and finance? today so the way that i think about this is I, I i split it in two um so i think in terms of what is personal productivity for me as an individual so what can a finance pro do themselves without having to get buy-in from the rest of the business and that's not me saying you've got to use ai in secret obviously every company is going to have a policy you know as it pertains to data protection and use of these tools so you know always ask your, your company in case you're in breach of some sort of policy but yeah there is personal tools, some of them that we're going to go through today, and they are to enhance your workflow, to speed up your output, um, and to drive you more towards, you know, spending more time on the value added stuff and less time on the, you know, creating documents and creating formulas and messing around with spreadsheets and, and all of that sort of stuff. On the business side of things, again, we'll have a bit of a preview today. That's when we're moving more into connecting data, driving insights from that data, to the point where we can provide either as individuals or the business can glean insights from the data that you've got. Um, traditional use of AI with data is sort of, I mean, it, it seems old hat now, funnily enough, but you know, a lot of businesses still don't use it. It's like machine learning and all of those algorithms that can help you make predictions. But with generative AI now, which is what we're gonna talk about quite heavily today, you can now Q&A data much more easily than you've been able to before. You can have chatbots create code for you without even realizing that it's creating code in the background. 
to help supercharge your ability to plan, forecast, and gain insights from your data. So we'll, we'll go through that bit today. So yeah, two, two areas, personal productivity, business insights. Um, so a quick summary there. Okay, great. Um, let's check out the poll results to see where the audience is using AI right now. Okay. So it's pretty diverse. Like, um, so we have 28% saying they use it to write content, you know, professional content. Um, 33% are using it to analyze data, right? Um, we have 11% using it as spreadsheet add-ons, you know, on their spreadsheets. Um, 11% are not using AI yet. Um, hopefully after this, maybe you will. Um, yeah. And 21% other. So yeah, we left the other option there. So if you guys that click other want to share in the comments, like what other use cases you're using AI for, I mean, I think we'll all be happy to know. Right. Um, so that's great. Thank you guys. Um, yes. Okay. Now I think no further ado is needed and we can just dive right in to the highlight of our session. Um, so Adam is going to showcase um, his top three AI tools for finance. Um, and we're gonna go through each of those. Um, so Adam, what tools are you gonna be showcasing today? So we're gonna have a look at ChatGPT. Sorry to anybody that's fed up with ChatGPT, but it has come on a, a long way. Um, and we're gonna have a look at what's accessible in the free version and what's available in the pro version so people can get an understanding. Um, it's worth saying that I'm, I'm not affiliated with OpenAI. I'm not affiliated with any of the tools that we're going through today. So it's all off my own back. You know, I pay for these tools personally. Well, only ChatGPT, the rest are free, right? Um, but it, so we're going to have a look at that. So pros and cons of the free and paid versions. Then we're going to have a look at Notable, which for anybody who's a bit more technical is what's called a Jupyter Notebook. Now, we're not going to get into anything technical because I'm not a developer and hopefully um, I don't have any developers on the call today, otherwise I might get caught out. <laughs> um, but no, we're, we're going to look at that. But basically, it's just a mechanism to Q&A your data so that you can produce visualizations with larger data sets than you would if you were using ChatGPT alone, for example. And then we're going to go into PO, P-O-E. And that is a free platform to an extent. There's always a catch, isn't there? Um, and that enables you to use multiple large language models. Yeah, so it's not just open AI who have these big generative AI language models. So using platforms like PO, you can use different models according to your preferences because different models produce different results, but you can also create your own bots in PO. Yeah, you can in ChatGPT using GPTs, but PO is a free way of creating your own AI bots. So we're gonna have a look at that as well. Okay, that sounds amazing, but I think it's better to show than tell, right? Mm -hmm. So let's just dive in. Adam's going to share his screen and kind of just walk us through those three tools. Very good. Can you confirm that you can see my screen okay? Confirmed. Good. So hopefully nothing in my tabs is sensitive data. So just to walk you through what you can see on screen, everything is, is just being done through my browser. I'm using Edge. Um, we're not going to discuss it today, but Edge has also got Bing Chat Enterprise built into it now, or what it refers to as Copilot. So anybody using Edge, you've probably got that. So just a bonus tip there for you. Um, so we've got ChatGPT first tab, which is open now. We've then got Notable for our financial analysis, tab two. We've then got the data that I'm using in tab three. That's that financial sample at the top. And again, it's dummy data. It's not actual data. Then we've got PO, and then the other tabs are some of the prompts that I'm going to copy to save you watching me type out prompts. Um, and then the guide at the top right is some more prompts from a guide that I did uh, a while ago. It's a little bit dated now, but the prompts still work. All right. So let me just demystify, because because people that don't have the paid version of ChatGPT probably don't have access to this GPT-4 model. So GPT-4, simple explanation, is just more intelligent than the GPT-3.5. Yeah, so it can provide more advanced responses and it can essentially do more. With GPT-4 now, you've got DALI, which will help you generate Im images. It's connected to the internet, so you can browse with it, um, but there are limitations. So you can't use it as frequently as with GPT-3.5. So here I'm limited to four, 40 messages every three hours, and that's just down to uh, OpenAI's compute power. So we're gonna start in GPT-3.5. You will also see on the left here that I've also got these little little GPTs at the top here. Now these are configured bots. Yeah, so I've given them a base prompt and we can have a look at a couple um, to basically train them so that I don't have to add context to my prompts every time. So we've got uh, one that helps me with my child's eating habits. <laughs> 
Uh, we've got a, a benchmark body there, um, which helps do sort of a benchmarking exercise alongside your in inventory and pull sort of insights from other companies and other challenges in the industry. So that's quite an interesting one. We're not going to have time to go through all of them today. If anybody does want to link to those bots, then they're all publicly available. So just uh, give, give me a shout and I can give you the link. All right. So first, we're just going to start with a, with a very simple prompt because I, I really quickly just want to get into how you can immediately improve the quality of the response with the free version of ChatGPT, yeah, using something called custom instructions, which some of you might use, some of you might not use, right? So we're just going to do something very basic, probably a very bad prompt. So I'm just going to say, um, help me generate a budget matrix for my business. So we're likely to get a pretty simple response. It's quick because it's 3.5 and because it's less intelligent, it can produce information quicker, but I've not given any context. So ChatGPT doesn't know anything about my business. It doesn't know anything about my departments and I've not given it any instructions on what I want the matrix to look like. So it's, it's just a guess, right? But it's, it's decent, it's getting better all the time. So it's done exactly what, what I've said. Um, and it's produced a matrix with some guidance on how to use it, which is great. So it's nice to see that even with simple prompts, you can still get pretty decent outputs, right? But what I'd like to be able to do is have ChatGPT know a little bit more about me without me having to give too much away in terms of data. Yeah, so I don't have to give my company name. I don't have to give any sensitive information in terms of company financials, but I can give a little bit more context. So what I can do is I can go into something here called custom instructions, and it will bring up a little dialogue here that allows us first to enter, how would you like ChatGPT or what would you like ChatGPT to know about you? And then how would you like ChatGPT to respond? And as soon as you've populated those custom instructions, it's immediately going to refer to that as context every time you ask ChatGPT a question. So I'm just gonna go into my little prompt repository here. Um, it's a good idea, I use Notable, um, but you could use a Google Sheet, you know, um, but basically I just save all of the prompts that I use a, a lot in like a, essentially a, a smart looking spreadsheet here, right? So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to open my finance custom instruction that I've got preset here, and I'm just doing it as bullet points. So we can see here what needs to be known, financial controller, professional service industry, responsible for X, and then a bit more about, you know, some of the tools that we use in that. And then how do you want ChatGPT to respond as though speaking to a seasoned finance professional and, and you can read. So I'm not going to go through all, all of these points here. But this is where you can start getting a little bit more creative. And this is where you can start making ChatGPT a little bit less boring than the default responses, because you can start saying stuff like, challenge my perspectives. You know, I don't just want the generic answer for everything. You know, give me something new, yeah? Or um, provide supplementary knowledge, you know, because I'm a finance pro that's interested in upskilling and learning something new. So when you generate a response for me, try and teach me something that I don't know, yeah? So if I copy this over, copy that and I'll put it into my custom instructions there and then just go back again in terms of how to respond and copy that into my how would you like chat GPT to respond and save that toggle enable for new chats and that will automatically place it in my new chat if I now create a new chat again GPT 3.5 so it's the free version using this custom instruction I can do the same prompt and just get it uh, again just so I can make sure that it is like for like how we generate a budget matrix for my business there we go so it's going to keep going keep going there we go so it's immediately given more context based on how do i want um chat gpt to respond when i ask it a question yeah and then it's also immediately created a better matrix it's not as long but it's tied to the instructions that i've given that are more relevant to the departments that it knows that I already manage or that I produce documents for. Yeah, so hopefully that will make sense. But I love this because, you know, as I say, I'm a bit of a nerd, but my recommendation is try not get too much into the weeds. Yeah, so you don't have to have really complicated custom instruction. Just having ChatGP know that you work in finance and you're in the industry is, is a, the quickest way to just immediately improve the quality of the responses that you're getting. Is that all okay? I love that. That it's uh, simplifies that. Cool. So what we'll do then is um, 
we'll do just a bit of a comparison with more, I guess, advanced prompts between the free and then we'll switch into the pro version so that you can see the difference between um, the 3.5 model and the GPT-4 model. Um, for anybody that's on the fence about, you know, subscribing to ChatGPT Pro, again, completely up to you. Just the free version is a bit of a game changer in terms of just getting a leg up and a really fast starting point for a lot of your work. But if you're really wanting to go that step further, then the pro version might be for you. But again, you know, no plug, no affiliation. What I'm just going to do is I'm going to go into um, my guide and just copy some of these, these prompts that, that I was doing um, a few months ago. So in this instance, we just do write a cheat sheet. So it's not it's not a really complicated prompt, but we've got write a cheat sheet for an Excel logical function formulas. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn off my custom instructions just so that we can see what the blanket response is. So we'll just say we um, do a new chat. So if I just copy that prompt in again, free version, we'll get it to give us a bit of a cheat sheet, which which is great, you know, and it means from my perspective. That I don't have to download cheat sheets from LinkedIn <laughs> in PDFs and save them somewhere. You know, I can I can just get it to go immediately to the relevant part. In this instance, logical function formulas. Right. If I then switch to the pro yeah, version, we're definitely going to share this uh, yeah. cheat. Yeah, do that. Yeah. So we're going to GPT four, and again for simpler prompts, there might not be a huge amount of variance. So if we do the same thing. Oh, what it's doing now is it's actually using some of the advanced data analysis in the pro version. So it's it's tied to um, a coding language that uses Python. So I don't really know what it's doing here because I didn't really ask it to um, do any sort of coding for me in the background, but we'll, we'll see what it brings up. But the whole point of this is the chat GPT will look at the prompt and it will immediately identify what gadgetry in the background it needs to use for you. Yeah. It used to be referred to as the um, code interpreter. They then renamed it to advanced data analysis, which again, wasn't much of a improvement on the original name, but now there is no switch. So, so ChatGPT will automatically try and infer what you want to use from those sort of plugins and additions without you having to switch between advanced data analysis and all of that sort of stuff. So. Okay, so what it seems to have done here, can, can we see um, some of the sort of, I guess, it, italicized wording here coming through? That probably confirmed when it's been doing some of the calculations in the background using that advanced data analysis. So it's good to see that it's actually trying to use a more advanced logical uh, uh, model to produce more accurate results. The reason being that previous versions of ChatGPT weren't really very good with numbers. Yeah, so if you'd asked it to do a complex calculation, it might come back with something that is incorrect. So I yeah. think, and I don't know for a fact, but what it's done there and looking at that advanced coding language in the background, it's double checked that the formulas it's producing are correct and giving us um, that correct syntax there. So again, not that much difference in terms of output, but you'd have to test it yourself to see whether there's been an improvement in quality of the formulas that it's produced. Yeah. So last thing real quick, um, we'll just do a more complicated prompt. And this is what you might call a mega prompt. And let me just move you guys for a second so I can get to my scroller. So this is um, a scenario planning prompt. <laughs> and it's a really long prompt. <laughs> it's why I'm, I'm copying it, right? But a mega prompt is a prompt that's made up of lots of different components. Um, in this instance, I'm asking it to act as a CFO I'm giving it information on my team makeup. I'm giving it information on who's leaving us and who's potentially joining us. And then I'm asking it to plan some scenarios on what sort of skills we might need in the future, um, whether there's any tools that we might want to invest in to support that, you know, and basically get it to make a couple of recommendations on the makeup of what my future finance team might look like. So I'm just going to copy that. Again, so you'll this see is it. basically taking it more to the business side of things. Correct. Yeah. But mm -hmm. as an individual, if I'm a CFO or if I'm um, maybe not even a CFO, but wanting to support somebody more senior, again, I can use it to build influence, you know, and, and all of that sort of stuff. So there's always pros, right? It should get that okay. Uh, but again, free version is doing a pretty decent job in coming back with some uh, example scenarios. So if I just stop it from scrolling down, I asked it to give me, I think, three or five scenarios. So it's done that. 
So it's making recommendation scenario one, this is who you need to hire, um, and this is what you need to do basically. And then in terms of priorities and KPIs, these are some things for you to think about. So again, we can share the prompt afterwards because we don't have time to go through it today, but that's a half decent output from the free version of ChatGPT. So pretty good, right? But again, if we switch to the pro version, do the same prompt, it's not looking at any of the advanced code interpreter stuff there. Um, but what we should immediately see is it's a slower response because it's improving the quality of the response with that more advanced model based on uh, compared against the free version of, of chat gpt now it's paused a little bit here i don't know whether i'm going to get an error we are going through this quite quickly we do know the open ai servers are just being absolutely rammed at the moment yeah um so if there are any delays you saw that limit at the top here that said you know you're limited mm -hmm. to 40 messages i don't know whether i'm at my limit because i use it quite a lot but sometimes you do get cogs, you do get delays. Um, and sometimes you've just got to click the little refresh button to get it to do it again. Yeah. So interesting that in this instance, I've got a quicker answer from the free version than having to, to, to go down the pro route and ask it to refresh that again. But anyway, we, we can leave it working and come back to it. Yeah. Or try it again because I'm conscious of time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, guys, and just quick reminder that if you have any questions for Adam about anything that he's doing, specific things, feel free to write it down, right, um, in the chat or in the Q and A. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna get it to to stop and just see whether we can get it to do it again, just to to do that. Yeah, there we go. Network error. Uh -huh. So sorry, the demo demons uh -huh. have got me, as we say. I'll try one more time, see what it does. Um, there we go. So hopefully, it'll do it. So. Yeah, it's still not perfect, still a little bit buggy, um, but what we should have is a more detailed, more useful response from the pro version than in the free version. And you can see it going through there as we go through. So as I say, I'll, I'll provide the link to these chats because anybody can access them once I've generated and then Hedar can um, circulate after the, the session. Yeah. All right. Okay, that's so great. I'll stop it generating. Yeah, let's say probably um, if you're just starting out with AI, experimenting, um, probably could start with a free version, test it out, see if that's like the good, uh, something that fits you, then like decide it. whether it's worth investment or not. But do use those custom instructions before you start getting into any of the pro stuff because there's some real quick wins there, all right? Hey.